I can't talk to you right now. I'm going through a tunnel. Super Bowl 50 and my Atlanta Falcons were in the Super Bowl for the first time since 1999. So I remember that game extremely vividly. I was with my mom, my dad, and my uncle. It was the first Super Bowl I'd ever seen in my entire life. I was too young to understand the actual gravity of the game, but even at that point, Atlanta in 1999 only had one championship in its major four sports, baseball, hockey, basketball, and football. One national title. So I watched the game, had my heart broken. We lost 34 to 19 back in 99. And last night, we lost yet another Super Bowl. We were up the whole game except for the fourth quarter. We lost in we lost in overtime. We lost in overtime. We lost in overtime. We ran out of gas. We lost 34 to 28. There's something about the number 34, right? <laughs> but I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Now I'm here down here in Washington Square Park. I'm about to teach a lesson for the first time with this brand new student. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Second Street. I'm going up to the elevator. Gonna do a fitting for. <laughs> Oops! I had to bleep out that little last bit because I'm not even supposed to say who this uh, whole little uh, surprise thing is for. Apparently, so I'm gonna keep that under wraps until very, very soon. Uh, it's happening next week, so, I mean, I, there's, there, there'll be plenty of time. I'll let you know what it was about. Okay, so done with that. On the way back home, got some practicing to do. Then later on tonight, I'm going to be doing a chamber reading with Amy again. It's going to be so much fun. Is that a viola? What's up? Bro. What's up? What's up? Too nice. I'm gonna play for you. <laughs> you wanna play? You wanna play for me? Play for me. No, I don't. Why not? What do you mean? What do you, mean? you know, it's so funny. I was walking by and I was like thinking I would love to play right here. This is a great spot. So yeah, if you ever need any like help or advice, just let me know. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I got you, man. Just let me know. Hey, you got people coming through. You gotta get back to work, man. You better get back to work. It's nice to meet you, Frank. Take care, buddy. You too. I swear that never, ever happens. I don't get recognized on the street, ever. So that was really cool. Wow. Thanks, Frank. That was nice meeting you, buddy. By the way, if you want to cash me outside of YouTube, you can check me out at that Viola Kid on Instagram. How about that? Anyway. 
today. So I'm back here in my apartment and I am practicing. And I wanted to give you guys a quick tip, TPK tip of the day on how to go ahead and get uh, your practicing up to a higher caliber. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a long time, you will remember I did a quick video back in the day called How to Practice Music. And in that video, I talk about recording, and by and large, I think recording is one of the most important things you can do to improve by yourself without a teacher, because it allows you to be outside of your sound, outside of your bubble, and hear exactly what is going on in real time, and then give yourself correct and in-depth feedback on how you actually sound. Being out of school has taught me a lot of different things. And one of the most salient ones is I don't feel very motivated when I'm not around people who are playing their instrument. I actually from day to day spend most of my time alone with a cat every once in a while. And uh, cats don't play violins or violas or cellos, so it's really hard for me sometimes to feel motivated to actually practice. So a huge, this bit, there, there, this tip comes in two parts. This tip, I think, will change your life. It'll change your life, it'll help you become a more efficient practicer, and I think it'll make you a better musician overall. And this tip is to set a schedule and record everything you do in a practice log. I'm talking everything you do in a practice log. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you guys have heard this before. I probably, I'm never gonna tell you something you haven't heard before. Like, th these are age old things, but because they're age old pedagogical tips, that means they work. Like, people have done them, you can fight them all you want, but if you don't do these things, you won't see the level of results you want. The thing is, is like, because I'm not feeling motivated, if you're feeling unmotivated, you have to force yourself to do that. And a way for me that I've learned to force myself is to set a schedule, because if I put it down on the calendar, I feel like I have to do it. Like if I put, I'm gonna be practicing from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., that's it. Like I can't schedule in anything else. Somebody says, hey, you wanna go to lunch? I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm full, I'm busy, I have something I have to do. And I think if you put stuff down on your calendar, that is gonna make you feel so much more obligated to do it. I would recommend that. And the second part comes down to writing down things in your practice log. Now, give me a second, let me show you what I mean. Now guys, as I was saying, I think the one of the most important things to do is actually record your results and give yourself goals when you do your practice log. So you see today's date, uh, February 6th, I have a few goals. I wanna solidify the seventh page of Bar Talk. I wanted to get the fourth and uh, fifth pages cleaner and I wanted to record for my vlog and Instagram. Lols. Okay, so what you need to do is then set up, how are you gonna reach these goals? I first have, I have my steps. I wanna go and do a warm up and I did an hours long worth of warm up. And what's really important is because I, I've created a time frame for me to actually practice, which was one o'clock to five o'clock, I actually said, okay, I want to have a goal of six boxes. And what I mean by boxes is whenever I practice 30 minutes, I record that as a box. And so if I say I want six boxes today to achieve these goals, that means I'm gonna practice for three hours. So right here, I practiced my warm up. I already did my scales, I already did my arpeggios and some warm up stuff, and I did that for an hour. Okay, so that, I have two boxes, so I've already knocked out two boxes. Right now, I'm in the break after doing half a box um, of page six. I'm on my 10 minute break, and that's why I'm talking to you guys. That's, that's what I'm doing. So schedule in your breaks, schedule in your practice, and really go blow by blow what you're gonna do. Break your practice up into sections, adhere to those sections, give yourself a timer, and go to work. This is how professionals do it. This is how you do it, guys. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. And the last thing you should do, and honestly, I think this is the most important part of your practice log, last thing you should do is take notes on what went right and what went wrong. Just take notes of what you're having trouble with and possible solutions. This is important to record your results, test things out, really be meticulous and think more than you actually do. Really think about what you're doing and think about possible solutions because the best practicers actually play the least and they think the most. Happy practicing.
So I just finished all that practicing stuff. I still have some more to do, but I gotta go read with Amy. So we're gonna head off to her house and play some jamming music. Feeling a little under the weather. Like my nose has just been like post nasal dripping all day. Um, guess that's what happens when you're allergic to a cat and you've been in the house with a cat all day. Plus it's cold outside and I don't know, man. Running, I'm sorry. Oh, I brought a stand too.